early access is an interesting place. While today it's seen in a negative light almost completely and is more of a home for shovelware survival games, before all of that, it was something much more special. I talked a little bit about it in the first episode of Kenshi, and that got me thinking. Early access in the early days was more of a mark of quality. You had to be of a specific sort of tier product to get onto early access, and that held true for quite a while. And if we look at the first batch of early access games, there's quite a few there that are still being developed today, or even updated. And one can't look at early access on my channel without thinking of one very specific game, one that I've been playing before it ever even hit Steam. The one game that sent my channel to the direction that it did. And that, of course, is Indie Stone's Project Zomboid. Another sandbox game, like Kenshi, but in a much different vein. You're not controlling a group of people. This isn't an RPG, there aren't NPCs around the world that are operating and simulating all while you play. Instead, you play one lone individual in a world that is already long dead and overrun with the undead zombies. Your typical zombie apocalypse scenario. But unlike other zombie games, this one, you are not playing the hero, you're not playing someone immune to the disease or someone who's gonna bring the cure. You're just playing one of its hapless victims caught up in the whirlwind of the end times. There is no win condition. There is no end goal. The only goal, the only objective in Project Zomboid is just to survive as long as you can. Along the way, you'll be doing a lot of things, including having to manage your hunger, your thirst, your character's sleep, their paranoia, their boredom, and many other things. Everything you do has something tied to it, whether it be noise or a visual representation, and everything you do improves one of your many, many, many skills that, as you guessed, start at zero. Unless, of course, you add a few traits in character creation that make you a little bit better. You'll be picking a profession, or none at all, and then you can pick other traits in a negative and positive fashion. Positive traits cost you trait points, and negative traits give you trait points. You can't overspend in positive traits without having an appropriate number of negative ones to balance it out. After that's all said and done, you're dropped in the world, and you're tasked with surviving in a giant created land with four different locations, I believe, now. And just see how long you can last. Over time, the game has gotten a lot more detailed, a lot more intricate, and, in turn, a lot more difficult. And it has been quite a long time since I've touched Project Zomboid. But with this new style of video and commentary, you'd be a fool to think I wasn't going to at least try it with Project Zomboid. I don't know how long this will last, and I don't even know how much work it'll be. Probably a lot, much like Kenshi, but if things go well, this may be the type of video you see on my channel exclusively. Alongside this release, Dean and I have also launched a Patreon. If you want to see what that's all about, there should be a separate video. I'll link it below, as well as a link to the Patreon, with all kinds of rewards that should give you benefits for supporting me. These videos are hard to make, long to make, and are genuinely a joy for us to make. But the workload is definitely much more than it was. So, with all that said, let's just get down to business, and let's play. Meet Joy Garcia, a 27-year-old female who was before the apocalypse a fire officer. But since then, the world has died. And what she is now is merely a survivor. She was single, wasn't married, and lived in the small house that we call hers for a while. She had a happy life in this house and quite enjoyed her friends and family when she talked to them. However, she hasn't spoken to her family in what feels like months and her neighbors have all disappeared. Run off due to the news on the TV talking about the military bombing this city, and yet that hasn't come to pass, or scared off from the hordes of walking corpses on the street. It's been difficult, but Joy, if anything, is resilient, and she's not ready to give up her hometown without a fight. This is Project Zomboid. 
First thing we should do before we continue here is turn off this TV because it's making a lot of noise and I'd rather not really worry about it too much right now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and turn that off. Uh, and this is what it's all about. We're going to go over a character here quickly and then we're going to just get to surviving. So first, Joy, like I said, is a fire officer. Being a fire officer actually gave her some extra perks. She's stout, she's fit, and she is... Oops, Lucky. That one I picked. It came with these two and a couple of regular stat improvements. On top of that, I figured that while she wasn't a while she was a fire officer, she's a little slow with her hands. She's all thumbs. What this means is a bad trait. It gave us a little points to play with, and moving things from inventory to inventory is a little slower than it normally would be. And since the apocalypse has hit all the while, she's been paranoid, worried that every little cough or every little sniffle is a representation of the disease taking hold of her body. So she is a hypochondriac as well. What a hypochondriac means is that she will actually develop the symptoms of infection without actually being infected, her mind wandering and creating symptoms that aren't actually there. But these two gave me four points, and I spent those four points on Lucky. Lucky is exactly as it sounds. I'm going to be a little bit luckier finding good inventory around houses. More rare things, like a two-handed axe, for instance, might be something I'd be able to find well within my first few days of playing the game, but that's just up to luck. It's very much that. We also have one point in sprinting right out the gate, thanks to her starting abilities, and her health is fine currently. All these skills are go up as you do them, and we'll be worrying about what skills we're going to bring up as time goes on. But for now, sprinting level one to grab right away is very, very nice. Um, that's just purely due to it means we're going to be moving faster. And over here are passive stuff. She has fitness and strength, so she's got quite nice uh, levels in both of those. Uh, those give us bonuses in, in uh, swinging power and, and how long we're able to go with before we start exerting ourselves and so on. But we are currently in Muldrow, a small part of the city. Um, again, there's four parts of what is a fictional Kentucky here. And we are just tasked with surviving. So the very first thing Joy is going to want to do as she's gotten back home and realized that there is probably more undead out there than there were the day before and the numbers continue to grow is to take stock of what she has. What do we need and what can we, where can we go to get it? I don't know if there are maps in the game yet. I think there might be. We're running modless with the default difficulty as well, which means we have electricity and water for 30-ish days, give or take. The game randomly decides at what point the electricity and water are going to be cut off. Uh, so we got to make use of at least the water while we still can. So let's start with the refrigerator. We've got some fresh yogurt in there, nothing huge. And we got some ice cream in the freezer aspect of it. In the shelf next to it, and you can see what's getting highlighted as we look, we've got a bowl, canned tomatoes, chocolate, and dog food, as well as another bowl in the compartments above with a canned tomatoes, chips, and a spoon. Uh, some decent amount of food, but nothing great. Ah, let's go ahead and grab this. A bottle of water is, is really good to have. Uh, and a cooking pot as well. I'm going to grab that, and I'll explain why here in a minute. But we don't really have anything to defend ourselves with. Uh, even a... a a frying pan would be good right now, as long as it would allow us to manage uh, individual zombies one at a time. So let's check out the rest of the rooms. I don't think the game spawns any zombies in your starting house. We've got some underwear there. But this is actually a great bedroom because we can rest here and there are no windows. So no zombies will see us moving around in here if we decide to spend some time. In here... We've got another bed and another window with curtains on it, but we can actually go ahead and close those curtains. And we've got sheets and underwear in here and nothing in that drawer. Those sheets are great because we can actually use makeshift bandages out of them or cover the windows with it so zombies can't see us. Additionally, a bathroom and we've got a comb and no medicine. And we have, it looks like a shed outside. We can also zoom out quite far, uh, which I will likely be playing most of the game in for the most part uh, in that way. Okay, so uh, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and start transferring all these bowls over. And I'm gonna, the reason is I wanna start getting water stashed away very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and drink here first so we're tapped out on thirst. And then we're just gonna go ahead and fill every container that we can. There we go. So the cooking pot is gonna get filled up as well on top of the two bowls. Basically, this first bar is her equipping it, and then the second bar is her filling it. And that should be everything there. Um, so we're going to go back into the refrigerator, and we're going to go here. And I'm just going to put the bowls of water in here, 
both of them and the cooking pot because they're incredibly heavy when they're filled with water, especially the cooking pot. But we're going to keep the water bottle on hand for, I think, obvious reasons here. So let's go ahead and stash that. You can see how long it actually takes for her to do it when she has all thumbs. It would be a little bit faster if she wasn't rolling with all thumbs, but such is life. And we're going to try not to overload ourselves too much. Our food situation is actually pretty good. And we actually have a lot of books, which is also great because it means we can keep ourselves occupied and not get too bored if we have to spend a few days in the house, whether it be because of weather or because of uh, zombies. So let's pop out. We can actually lock the door if we want to. Oh, maybe we can't. Ah, does she not have any keys? It looks like she has no keys, so this house might not even be hers, or she lost it. Uh, lost the keys to this house. And this door is unfortunately locked. Uh, and we don't have the key, so we can't actually do anything with it. All right. Well, with that in mind, I think our first order of business here it's just hit up some of the nearby houses. Uh, we've got a row of houses over here, and I have a vague memory of this. We should have a bunch of houses these colors rowed up on each side. And we have a few Zeds moving that way. And we have one banging on the door there. So already we kind of are in a, a disadvantageous position. We want to be able to spend at least a couple of days here. And Joy herself would like to not have to leave that house very often, at least in the first few days, until we have a much better traversal situation. See, that zombie saw us. As soon as we walked, it was facing this way. She saw us. She's going to start banging on that window. There's a busted window here as well, which worries me. It means somebody broke in. Probably her or broke out. Hopefully broke in is the answer. What we want to do is we want to find a house that we can at the very least tell there's no zombies. We've I hear actually mumbling. Okay. We're going to try and crack this window. No alarm went off. I don't see anybody in here, so we're going to climb in. And we're going to go ahead and close the window. And we're simply just going to turn the TV off. Why is it making a whirring noise? Please turn off. I thought I turned it off, but apparently not. I can hear some light thudding. I don't think a rolling pin is great as a weapon, but as she pulls the drawer open and sees there's actually some cooking utensils here, uh, we're, we're at least going to feel a little immediately more safe. We're going to have something to at least knock back zombies with with a distance so we don't have to get, let them get really close and beat them on the ground instead of having to step on their faces as they fight back. Uh, fingers crossed we won't need to fight them, but it actually looks like a baseball bat, which is great for us. We have somebody moving. This actually, this place is, in, is very, very active, and I don't like that. I'm a little nervous to go into the bedroom, so I probably won't. But what we're going to do is grab all of this... And our next, the next thing we really need is a bag of some sort. We're not going to be able to carry much. You can see up here how much we can hold on to until that reaches 14. Uh, that's how much we can hold. Unless we can get a backpack, a trash bag, pretty much any of the above will allow us to, ooh, a hammer, uh, will allow us to defend ourselves a lot better. A trowel is good because we can actually do some gardening. I'm going to go ahead and, and take the hammer, but I, it's a better weapon damage-wise but it's also a much shorter range weapon, so we have to be much closer to the zombies themselves if we want to hit them. I'm a little nervous to be popping in through here, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna open the door and zoom out. And the reason I want to be careful, and there's a car there as well, which it might might be useful. Uh, seeing that car immediately has some ideas instilled into her. We could take that car, be loud, but if things got really bad, if we can get the keys to this car that's right over here, I think. Yep, there it is, which has a, it looks like it was a delivery boy's car. Um, we can have a, a way, if we get the keys, we have at least an emergency out. As long as the car is in good shape, there's a chance that th there's a lot of broken parts with the car. Okay, we've got a Zed coming up on us. That's why you got to keep an eyes out. The thing that will kill you in Zomboid isn't the zombies per se, though technically that's what it is. Uh, it's more um, your laziness or your confidence. Confidence, as they say in the Darkest Dungeon, is a slow and insidious killer. And that is very true in Zomboid, specifically. Um, 
they absolutely your your own laziness and confidence will be what ends up killing you here anyway to be able to figure out what we can do with that car we have to make room and kill off some of these guys in time and then we have to search their corpses because usually what happens is that the the car or the owner of the car is usually a zombie nearby and should that be the case we should be able to get some keys from her all right she took a lot to take down let's back up a little bit here joy has seen people kill before and she herself has probably taken out one or two zombies, but she's not good at it, meaning she hasn't done it often. You know a zombie is dead when you hear the splurting of their guts, more or less. Also, you're going to notice a little thing pop up over here. You can see the door shaking. There's a zombie trying to break out uh, that says she's panicking. What panic does, obviously, when zombies get close, she starts panicking, but her vision gets restricted as well as... Um... Hang on. Her accuracy should go down as well, but it doesn't tell you too much. Slight panic isn't bad. It's when it gets way more intense then it becomes dangerous. So the plan here is to knock down one, charge up another attack, because the longer you hold, the stronger it is the bite's going to be. And we don't want to run very often. The reason we don't want to run is because running makes noise, and then noise is the enemy of our, own, our very own life. So we're going to try not to do that. Back up. How are we missing her every single time? We'll go ahead and get some attacks on her. A couple swings and we're going to back up. We Oh, he's fast. So there are some zombies that are a little faster than others. Usually that represents them being uh, newer zombies. Their bodies haven't decayed as much anymore. And they could take a lot more of a beating usually. But there we go. We took him out. Two have backed away. They've gotten distracted by something. Which is good. You, he's the one I feel like I've been beating on the most. Okay, he's dead now, which is good. And I don't want to go too far out that way. I want to stick relatively close. Because I don't want to attract more attention than I need to. Yeah, I want him to break away if he can. Yeah, she, he heard me sprint. See how far he could actually hear? Okay. Free hits when we can. She's panicking. Her heart is pounding. Her vision, accuracy and vision is reduced, as you can see. I don't want to necessarily take a swing when I'm this panicked, but we're going to have to try to get shots in when we can. One, two, three, four. The only way we're going to be able to safely ever loot these things is if we do exactly this, unfortunately. Okay, he's dead. Our, our frying pan has broken, though, which means we need to slap something else on. I guess we're going to equip. No, I don't want to favorite it. I want to equip it. Oh, God, run. Pa panic reaching for things is also a good way to get you killed. But Joy, she's a tough cookie. He just tried to take a bite out of me, and that almost, almost, almost got me. back up. I, I will check for injuries after. I didn't hear a, a chomping noise, so that's usually a good sign. Okay. I did not get a swing on him. Patience. Patience is key. And I think oh, oh. I think she knows that. Wow. We have to be very, very patient here. Okay. I wish we had hit a little bit further out there. Man, this guy is so fast. I wish she would take a shot. I really do. Hit him in the leg, man. Hit him in the leg, honey. Let her go. Why don't we just pull him back then? He's the fastest. Let's get him over here. He lunges. And even if we can break vision, that might even be good enough too. Yeah, see, they're getting distracted on the door. All right, kill the fast boy. Wow, and that is reason he was so fast. But they definitely would have heard that. Just keep an eye behind. Back up, we missed, it's okay. Good. 
Can't really miss when he's on the ground. Two more down. We have somebody in there. Window's broken. Door's being banged on. It's very possible she climbed into the window and then got stuck on the other side. That's the great thing about zombies. They're not smart. They operate on, like, one basic principle. Alright, let's take a look. Make sure we're not surrounded. We know we have... Okay, that's fine. The door's not being banged on anymore. She moved around to the other room. Joy had noticed that the, the door was not really vibrating any longer. Let's just keep an eye. Alright. Breath. Deep breath. <coughs> oh, man. What a an opening few moments there. The only thing she knew to do was to hit the houses nearby. And they were much, much more dangerous than she was hoping they were going to be. However, she pulled out her first victory. Notching each kill on her belt. Taking note of each one. In fact, we can see how many she's killed. I forget on what info panel. Ten. A rounded ten zombies in her first hours. The whole city evacuated, but she stayed behind. Slowly people disappeared. Now she's really realizing it's more than just a few. All right. We popped that. Let's take a look here in the side. We don't see anybody, but there is a broken window. Likely that zombie came out and fought us, so let's climb in. We'll pop this door open. And we'll make sure it's clean. Seems to be. TV's on. Once again, we'll go ahead and turn the TV off. It makes noise. Though a great way to attract zombies, if we ever need to, is to just turn every TV on in an area and hope for the best. Cooking for beginners? I'll absolutely take that. We could read that on our, on our downtime. Engineering magazine could be good as well. I'm pretty sure I heard moaning. Before we move from this house, though... Bathroom zombies are the deadliest, by the way. Dead rat, fresh and uncooked. We don't, we're don't. we not so desperate for food that we need to start eating rat corpses. There's a good chance that'll eventually happen, but not yet. Ah, we've got a plastic bag. So we're going to throw this as our secondary. And we can click this now as a secondary option of storage. And we're just going to throw everything into this bag. Can only hold up to eight, but it lessens the load for us. And that means we can do, uh, we can take a lot more. Actually, I don't want the flower. I'm going to shut this door as well. A watermelon, hell yes. And another bottle of water is also excellent. While we're out, we should also fill our bottle of water. She will drink from it naturally over time. We don't need to constantly tell her to drink. The only thing we need to tell her to drink, or need to tell her to do rather, is eat. She will drink on her own. So let's go ahead and fill our, just our water bottle. Taxi key. There it is. It was in one of the drawers, so whoever lived here has the key to that. Ooh, whiskey bottle could be great. That'll help us if we're in real bad moods, so though we don't want to get too dependent on it. Cookies. I'll take another frying pan. And I think we can start heading back now. We're starting to carry quite a lot, so we're going to be moving a lot slower. And that's not something I really want right now, but we have a pretty clear shot all the way back. So, we have the key for this. We can climb in. I don't know exactly how to check the car. Vehicle mechanics. There we go. So go to the hood. And I assume we're just popping it? Aha! Wow. Whew, I haven't messed with cars too much, until, like, except for the one they were put in really, really uh, a while ago and I played for like the first few days just to check them out. But it looks like it's in good condition. Thought I heard, fo heard footsteps. Sorry. Let's check again. Uh, the, the vehicle itself is in acceptable position, uh, condition. I think it would run. As long as it has gas. Um, you can see what's really hurt. The seats are extremely hurt. The battery is still going, though. Muffler's fine. Nice. Um, the front right brake is going to be bad. And all these things, as they break and go down in quality, they're going to affect how the car handles. And that's important to keep in mind. And we have 45% gas. I, I, we're out of gas. So we need gas. Um, if we click on headlight, 
It gives you it gives you more details when you click. Um, but we do need gas. So it, it actually we got very, very lucky in that we found a car that is needs minimal work. Um, that's really, really good for us. We can actually get that thing up and running pretty easily. Uh, we're going to go ahead and snack real quick. Open one can tuna for now. go and we're gonna go ahead and just eat the whole thing tuna's delicious and we can eat and walk but that's gonna get rid of the, our hungry we can actually feed ourselves until it's fed well fed all that good stuff and that will actually give us bonuses to some of our stats too so if we ever really need to make sure we are going on a long trip and need to be well maintained we should have a hearty meal beforehand i wish i could get into here i wonder if there's a key somewhere oh interesting Small little horde in the forest nearby. Let's get over the fence. And pop in here for the night. It's locked. We can go out the front door. Okay. Just checking the periphery. Something we're going to need to do every time we come back. One of the key ways to survive this game. And something that Joy will be very good at being a fire officer. Is developing uh, safety habits. Constantly. You want to make sure that when you come home, you do the same thing every single time. You come in, you check the peripherals. You look through the windows. If something looks wrong, window being broken, you see if there's any zombies nearby. Clean out and pay attention. If there are zombies nearby, are they worth fighting or are they worth just avoiding and hope they go away in the morning? Because while they're, the zombies are like feet, 20, 30 feet, as long as I'm hiding and staying quiet, they should not bother me. The other thing I want to do as well is... Make sure all the lights are off in the house because light attracts zombies. So that lamp is off, I believe. And there's a light switch here. Turn that off. I'll double check. Yep, all right. Turn that off. I don't see any switches elsewhere. But yeah, we do not want pretty much any light coming through. So the other big things I'm going to want to do, especially if we're going to set up here for a tiny while, even if we don't stay here long, is see if we can grab a sheet. What was that? There it is. Definitely grab a sheet. And we're going to throw some sheets up on the windows uh, at the front. The very first priority being this one, due to there being zombies. Not too far. Perfect. Now they can't see in. Okay. Okay. Let's start hurling things into the fridge. We can kind of just grab all of this and throw it in. We can throw that away, but we'll get to it in a second. We'll even throw the bottle of whiskey in here. As well. Pop in here. Pretty much grab all of these. Throw those. Watermelon, absolutely. TV dinner. And we'll let that go for a little bit. Let her put that away and then we'll continue. All right. I've done my original sorting, but the whole time, yeah. I can hear the moaning and the trees rustling. I'm debating going out there and trying to attract them and, and do damage. The issue is he doesn't know I'm here and the trees rustling are actually just distracting him more. The noises of the trees are keeping him running in circles because he just hears things and he just goes to it without much thought. So I'm not entirely sure it's even worth me going out there. What I do wish, and what I do wish I had was another sheet or two. I don't know if I had one in here. I don't. So we're going to have to go and grab some sheets at some point. I don't think I can take... Yeah, the sh like sheets off of beds. Um, so what I'm doing, by the way, is making sure everything that needs to be refrigerated stays in the fr in the refrigerator, mar bearing a couple of things I let accidentally go in there. And then to the directly next to it, I'm going to keep all the canned stuff, all the non-perishables. Uh, I want to do this because I like to try and keep things organized in this game when I when I do it. 
for my own sake and my own sanity. We're also going to go ahead and fill everything that we grabbed uh, while out and fill it with water so we can stash it. I cannot tell you how important stashing up water is going to be. And even if we end up having to abandon this place, we could always come back for the water that we leave behind. Yeah, you can hear him out there moaning. That scares me a bit. I might go out there. I think I'm going to go ahead and equip this as my primary for right now because I don't know what does more damage. The damage is the bottom, and we'll take a look at the top here in a second. It takes her a while to take things out of her inventory. All thumbs, baby. And it looks like it's about the same, honestly. <coughs> something in my throat. They're starting to, yeah, they're starting to meander much closer. There's at least four of them out here. So the other danger here is if we do decide to go to bed, and we should soon, we don't have a timer right now, but we should soon. Um, and they end up banging on the door. If my character doesn't hear it, she won't wake up. There's at least five. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go in here for the night. We're going to shut ourselves in. And then we're going to let her sleep. The days without people have come and gone. Joy has known it's she's been alone for some time. But never has she needed to break into one of her old friends or old neighbors' houses for supplies, like a true rat scavenging for whatever she can find just to live another day. But that's what this day has brought. The first step in the acceptance of a life she's tried to avoid. Society is gone. The world has crumbled. Joy is nothing now but a survivor.